we've also got other types of storage inside of our computers that we can remove from the computer and take with us. We see flash memory very commonly used for this. This is uh, different kinds of flash memory. These are the memory sticks or memory keys you may be accustomed to seeing that just plug into a USB connection. And they might have 8 gig or 4 gig or 16 gig or 32 gig. Because it is flash memory, it gets relatively expensive when you get up to larger amounts. But it's a good way to store 8 gig. That's, that's a lot. And that's a, a pretty inexpensive to, a way to plug in a, a key, store some files on there, pull it out, and take it to another computer or take it with you. We also have these other kinds of, of flash storage, SD. These types of storage are used a lot in uh, cameras. They aren't very fast in the way that they operate. They're good for storing pictures, sometimes good for storing video as well. And it's a very small format, so it's, it really applies very easily to portable technologies like cameras and like audio because you're able to fit a whole lot of data into a very small amount of space. If you've ever worked some older equipment, you may see something like a compact flash card. This is what you might see there. This is a 16 gig compact flash card. It's a little bit bigger format. It's a little bit more durable format too because it is bigger and it is thicker. But we're starting to see the use of compact flash give way to perhaps some of these easier to use, these smaller type formats such as the SD flash memory. We didn't used to think about hard drives as removable storage devices, but these days they certainly are. These are a good example of external hard drives. Here's one that's an all-in-one. It's got a case, and inside that case is a hard drive. In fact, it's got different formats on it. I can plug in either a USB or an external SATA connection into that particular drive. Here's one that is a simple interface that connects to my computer. But you simply take an existing hard drive and you just slam it right in the top of there. Now I can use that as external drive. When I want to use more storage, I would remove that drive and then just put another one right in place. So it makes it very modular, very easy for me to go to the store, buy a new hard drive, and just plug it into this standalone interface that I can now use to access that particular drive. It makes it very easy to swap in huge amounts of data that way as well. If you work in a corporate environment, you're probably storing a lot of data. Having hard drives to do that probably isn't financially practical. The way that most pe people do that these days is with tape drives. You take magnetic tape, you stick it into a machine, and you take all of the data from your computer system that's on your hard drive, and you simply copy it to the magnetic tape. It's copied digitally, and usually it's copied with encryption as well. That way, if somebody gets their hands on this magnetic tape later, they wouldn't be able to get any of your data off of it. Usually these are in formats like this, where I can have multiple tape drives in there simultaneously. In large environments, it's these very large environments, very large storage areas where you might have 16 or 32 or even more tape drives all running at one time so that you can take huge amounts of data, back them up overnight, and send them off site. That way, if something was to happen at your facility, you've still got a way to restore all of your data later on, and you haven't lost any of that important information. Let's see what we've learned from this module on storage devices. Here's a question for you. Which optical storage format can store up to 8.5 gigabytes of information? You recall which one dealt with that storage size? It was a DVD, a digital versatile disc. Really can store 8.5 gig. Obviously, I can do even more than that in my Blu-ray as well. So I'll give you credit if you answered to either one of those. Another question, which drive technology uses memory to store data instead of magnetic platters? We're so used to magnetic platters with our hard drives. What type uses memory? Well, that would be the solid state drive, or the SSD. And lastly, what type of interfaces are most commonly used to connect to external hard drives? We very often see different interfaces on hard drives, but there's one that really we almost always see connecting our external hard drives together, and that is usually USB, external SATA, or even FireWire on some of these interfaces as well. So that's one of the ways that we can connect up. And if you answered any of those, you're probably going to find a hard drive out there that's got some of those formats on there. Very easy to find those pieces. So that covers what we needed to know for our 220-701 requirements in Section 1.1, where we need to categorize storage devices and backup media. We went through floppy drives. We learned about hard drive types, our optical drives, and finally, our removable storage. If you'd like to see many more of our CompTIA a videos, you can participate in our message boards, leave a comment about this video, or much more. You can visit our website at freeaplus.com.